So I'm talking to Scott Phelan, who is the Director of Federal Government Operations for Lexmark International. And you know, Scott, it seems really funny to me that printers can be a way of making change happen. How is this possible? Well, it's true. Many, many uh, of our customers think of us as traditionally as a print manufacturer. Yeah. But we're so much more than that. Uh, print is still an important part of our, our operations. However, it's just another side of our story. Uh, what Lexmark is doing these days, and the big focus for us, is traditionally chasing or going after opportunities for solving the unstructured information challenges that government departments have today, even enterprise organizations. They're dealing with big data. Now, how do you take this unstructured content, if you will, or unstructured information, either paper or digital format, and bring it into your core systems so that the people and the applications are linked together in order to create a certain process or process that we want to complete in order to have that job more effective? That's the nature of where Lexmark is going. And that obviously in response to a need, this notion of big data. Correct. But explain to me how that works, because I do think that managers as a whole in government are still probably fairly tradition-based in terms of how they think of big data. So what are you talking about? Are you talking about putting in place systems? I mean, again, my naivete, I think of big data is I would go on the internet or go on some website and find what I need. Correct. But your, what, what, what will you bring to the table? If I could say that big data, we could classify that as information. Ah, I have yes. to first and foremost say that information is exploding. And I'm very, um, an, an exponential uh, amount of uh, papers coming towards us in many different formats. Again, either paper or digital. But the information that's residing out there now, people have more access to it uh, than ever before. Mm -hmm. The help of the internet, as an example, or mobile devices, we're creating this information, we're collaborating it. Uh, we're putting together and we're sharing it across our organizations. Well, what does that do? Well, that paralyzes uh, bandwidth within our networks. Uh, we're creating paper and then we're having it scanned, re-scanned, re-imaged, put back into our system. What do we do with all this information? How do we manage it effectively? So what can you guys, uh, this is great because I totally see the, the problem. So what, do you, what are you bringing to the table that can help me manage that? I'm, I have to tell you, the thinking of scanning documents, I've lived it, I know exactly Excellent. what you mean. Well, we've got over 22, 22 years experience in the business of managing unstructured content. Mm -hmm. And really, Lexmark in 2010 look a holistic, took a holistic view and looked at uh, the printing space workflow in general, business process improvement, and said, how can we better manage the information that's out there in front of us right now? So what they did was in uh, 2010, they purchased a company called Perceptive Software. It was an enterprise content management company that focused on big data, information, and how do we trap that information back. Since then, we've uh, migrated and, in, and acquired approximately 10 different other uh, software technologies to help automate those processes. So now from the cradle to the grave, we can, we can handle how we image a document today, how we pull it within your core systems to take that unstructured content and bring it into your structured content, which is like an SAP, a PeopleSoft, or even an open text uh, platform uh, for later retrieval, access. It's secure, it's readily available, the right information is available in real time uh, when you need it the most. And is it, I guess it has to also be managed, right? So Correct. it would be... Correct. Well, there's, secu absolutely. Security and there's security rates that are built behind it. What happens today with data? I mean, 80% uh, of all unstructured data resides outside of your core. And what I mean by that is that we're really focusing on 20% of the issue that's out there. Sorry, Say, okay. start from that phrase again. It's probably important to note that 80% of all information that's unstructured is outside of your core. So many uh, government departments have... Um, uh, brought in surf certain software technologies like SAP for an enterprise right. um, uh, enterprise software package, if right. you will. Uh, PeopleSoft, they handle their HR applications. Um, an Oracle database. Well, really, only 20% of the information that's being managed to handle a certain process is being relied on with those core products that are out there today. Well, what happens with that 80% of the content that we're talking about? Well, it's unstructured. It could be email, it could be photos, it could be audio. And if I think of an example of, say, foreign affairs, they have embassies across the globe. How do they collaborate and communicate that information and share it across their networks today? This will have huge implications, too, for the broad question of information management in the future. Correct. Because the old mental picture of information management is the manager looks at this piece of paper and says, yup, we should put that in the archives. Correct. Well, of course, he, as you've just noted, the sheer volume of information coming from the sheer volume, you know, the number of sources is it is exploding exponentially so presumably this kind of service would help in that area absolutely 
Um, what we really try to focus on, again, I keep mapping ourselves back to it, but is that unstructured content, yes. the things that just are not in our core products today, the things we don't have visibility to, which take away from the lack of control and um, uh, management of all this particular information or data that's out there today. Um, what Lexmark has done is truly taken a holistic approach in looking at these methodologies to understand how can we better communicate this technology, sorry, this information with the employees and the processes that we need to complete. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a dramatic change for us and the information that's out there today is in the billions of pages. How do we trap that information back? so that you could use it in real time in the right structure that you needed to complete that certain process. Let me change course now and take you back to the notion of, of printers or more modernly device consolidation. Correct. Because I am aware of the fact that in government departments the cost of paper production through the use of, um, I was going to say, just a wide variety of printers mm -hmm. that people seem to get because of their title or whatever is really turning out to be a, a, a huge opportunity for cost savings. Well, people were always concerned about what was on the printed page from a security aspect. So if you had an ADM, a CIO, or even director that, that felt the need that they needed to have that um, printing device lie resident on their, on their table, this is a thing of the future, uh, sorry, thing of the past. The future for us is essentially looking at that and saying there's so much security lied around how do we print that document today and how do we manage that content. So today, like you would have, even to walk into a door like we have today, we have proximity cards. And we have the ability to print to the cloud, have that information resident on a server somewhere, and be able to pull that information down in real time to the device, to have it readily available for you when you, when you need it. Um, again, from a sustainability standpoint, huge cost savings there. From a security standpoint, uh, the information is not, not lying resident on a printing device at the end of the day. Um, and therefore, obviously, you're streaming costs and reducing costs and improving productivity across your organization. But a bit of a culture change. I remember one uh, head of IT in a government department saying that an assistant deputy minister was threatening to resign because he was going to take her little inkjet printer away from her, to which he kind of dared her to do it. But this, you know what I mean? Like, this does oh, imply does. a change Absolutely. in how you think about paper and data management. You really need support from the top down in any organization. If they buy into it, CIO level, ADM level, buy into it, uh, well then that information bleeds down through, throughout the rest of the organization. Uh, today's technology, we have mobile cubes, we are mobile in general. Um, more companies or more departments in, in, uh, in general, I can think of Export Development Canada as an example, uh, they've got uh, pods or cubes. They log into a terminal every day, so that desk that they work at between 9 and 5, Monday to Friday, typically isn't their desk. It's a hoteling space. So we become a more mobile employee workforce, and with that comes a lot of information. We create it on our iPads, smartphones, that type of technology. We walk over to an MFP device with intelligent scanning capabilities, have these images printed off, rescan them in, have them digitized and sent across the globe. There's just a lot of information that's out there, and we need to be able to manage it. So the most effective way is to uh, take this information be able to gain control over it, but you need to get visibility. If you don't have visibility to the unstructured content that's in your environment, you'll never be able to solve the problems. So the what do you mean by visibility? Meaning that staff needs to understand this is an issue? Correct. I mean, at the end of the day, we have processes that we need to complete each and every day. That, that's part of our job. How do we complete those processes if we're looking through filing cabinets in the cloud or a mobile device to find all the information that we need? If we can collaborate and pull all that information together, have it readily available to you in real time, wouldn't you see value in that? I need to bring you from the ridiculous to the sublime, I guess, because of my background where I used to run a corporate services shop. Excellent. And I know that you have ways in which you could, one of my banes was updating forms. Like Every, you know, I get all these ideas, and Perfect this example. must be a huge cost to an organization. Are there ways that we could be better at doing that? Well, digitizing some of these documents is the first way. If you could have these forms readily available in a forms kiosk or a cloud, utilizing the MFP that we have today. So as an example, Lexmark makes uh, award-winning technology. Using the intelligence of an MFP device, now you can walk up, scan, you're authenticated at the device, pick a form, and have the information relied to you in real time. Uh, traditionally in the past, as you've just put it, you've had forms that are pre-printed and they show up at your office at a cost. That cost, now you can alleviate that because you can manipulate the form on the screen, populate the form with the information that you need in real time, and have it readily available to you. If something happens where the form changes, content on that form um, becomes oblivious, uh, you need to make that change. Digitally, you can make it in real time at your PC, have it flash to the device, 
and the form is updated, never having to print a document again. Yeah. Can you identify any government in your experience that gets this? I think on the, on the well, it's, it's kind of funny to say that we've, we've established a worldwide organization to go and trap information. What is the UK doing? What are our folks down south doing? What's Canada doing? And collaborating on that information. So once a month we have these meetings that uh, we get together on to understand more about what other governments are doing. And I have to tell you, UK and Canada are really moving the ball forward with, with respect to transparency, understanding that there's cost-cutting measures that are out there. We've got a more mobile workflow, uh, workforce. How do we get around or how do we bridge some of these gaps with the unstructured and the structured content that's out there in our workplace today? I'd have to say that we're very proud of what we have here in Canada. Uh, are we trailblazing? I, I think uh, both Treasury Board and PWGSC and Shared Services are looking at these um, uh, particular areas of opportunities to save money and increase end user productivity uh, with the tools that we can supply today. So we're very fortunate that we're trailblazing. We're hoping to reach the right individuals to broadcast our message. Uh, and of course, uh, see success as you know, Canada uh, on the international scene plays a good um, role in the development of these programs and processes and technologies. Terrific. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, Toby.